role of government, personally as well as in the Constitution, the role of government is very limited. The role of government is to protect our freedoms. It's not any more complicated. I just protect our freedoms, let we keep what we're in, keep the incentives there. And uh, yet today, uh, it's totally out of control. Uh, if you read the Constitution carefully, the Constitution is mostly prohibitions. You can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. Article 1, Section 8 says what you can do, and they stuck on eight, uh, Amendment Number 9 and 10 to make sure that the government wouldn't be doing all these things, and yet, uh, and, and if, the, if you wanted government, and you want government to be involved, you know, it goes back to the states. But unfortunately, we have lost that. We're in, in many ways, in a constitutional crisis because the Constitution has so little meaning. There, there's not much meaning there. But if we are complacent or if we accept that notion, then the big mistake is that it happened without amending the Constitution. Mm -hmm. If gold and silver still is legal tender under the Constitution, but now they say Federal Reserve notes are legal tender, and if you use gold and silver you go to prison, that means they ignore the Constitution. If they aren't protecting our, our civil liberties and our privacy, and they are protecting only government secrecy, and they have agencies of government like BATF and the uh, Homeland Security and the TSA agents violating our liberties all the time, if we allow it to happen, then we've allowed the Constitution to be changed in an improper manner. And therefore, what we have left is not all that great. I mean, the people, there's so little respect and really little understanding because we've, we've endured, you know, probably 70 or 80 years of an uh, educational system that taught everybody to uh, understand, the Constitution, understand the Constitution in a different fashion. And that is, the General Welfare Clause means you can endorse the whole welfare state. Oh, the Interstate Commerce Clause means that you can regulate every single product ever made and, uh, and, and, and let the federal government control it. It is respect for the Constitution that is so vital. I think it was probably the greatest document written for a country and a people, but it was not perfect, and that's why they, the uh, founders allowed us to amend it. But we're in a crisis now because we do way too much, even on foreign policy. There's no authority in there to say that we're supposed to be the policemen of the world, that we're supposed to be involved in entangling alliances. And, you know, we're involved in too many entangling alliances. For instance, I would like to uh, get out of the entangling alliance of the United Nations. <laughs> the IMF, the World Bank, the WTO, and NAFTA, and CAFTA, and all the rest. Why don't we defend the sovereignty of this country and uh, set an example for the world? People sometimes will accuse me of saying, well, you don't like to go over there and interfere and, and tell other people what to do. That means you're an isolationist. Well, it's not the case. I want to have trade and travel and visit with people and be friends with people, which is uh, quite, quite a bit uh, different. But if we, if we accept this idea that uh, the government should always be doing this and running things. Let me tell you, uh, we're not going to have much like, we're not going to have free trade, we're not going to have a productive economy, we're not going to have sound money, and it's basically the fact that uh, we haven't followed the Constitution. So if you can agree that we got into this mess because we don't respect the rule of law, I'd like to make a simple suggestion. Why don't we have only people, not only in the Congress, but in the White House, that truly believe and will enforce the Constitution? <laughs> there is no authority for us to be uh, involved in wars around the world. You say, well, we have to do for our national defense. Well, if it's for our national defense, the founders thought about this. First, they said, under an attack, uh, even in those days it was more important because the Congress wouldn't be in session. If, a government, if our country is under attack, a president does have an obvious responsibility to do something. But then immediately, if it's a prolonged uh, uh, you know, battle going on and you want to have a war, it's Congress that makes the decision. It's the people that make the decision. It's, it, and that way, only Congress can declare the wars. Today, today we're 
in, I imagine about five different wars, and they're ongoing, and even though they might make you think, we're likely to believe that the Iraqi war is over and there was a wonderful victory in Afghanistan, I think most people know we've been there 10 years and there's not much of a victory, but we're in Pakistan, we're in Somalia, we're in Yemen, and we're very much involved in Libya, and our CIA is involved in, uh, in Egypt, we're involved all over the places, we're in 130 countries, we have over 900 bases, and we're going broke. And they say, oh, well, we're getting ready to leave. Do you think, do you think the people in charge right now are ready to leave, uh, leave Iraq and, and Afghanistan, even though they tell us that? They're building huge bases over there. We built an embassy in Baghdad. It's bigger than the Vatican. It cost a billion dollars. I would suggest it would have been much better to spend that billion dollars back here at home is what we need.